Alright, let's go ahead and give that a call. Just maximize all this streamer setup crap. Alright, there we go. Bat, welcome. Hey, what's up, Brick Nick? How's, How's it going? going? Yeah, my favorite uh, subscription gift winner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. That was a very unexpected surprise. Yeah, I'm nice glad I could sure. glad I could you bring you into the world of winners. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I just wanted to thank you again for that great tournament that you. Uh, you know, oh man, all that the was hard work behind the scenes. That was so fun, and you know there was a lot of people that put so much effort into that. Shout out to Ox, you know, huge yeah. amount of effort from him and him and his team. Also, quick shout out to all the moderators and especially Starlight, who did three roles. You know, she was the biggest donator. She moderated games and she also figured out like bugs in the scoring system and did a lot of heavy lifting herself. And also oh, shout wow. out to Asian for you know fixing the imposter server and making that really just possible to even run the tournament. Given the scale yeah. we had, there was no way we we're going to be able to do that without the M server. So, props, man. Really appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. They they put in a lot of hard work. You can tell. Definitely, yeah. That tournament was really exciting, and I I hope it's not the end. Like I definitely look forward to more tournaments in future. I would love to see these things become like, I don't know how often would be the best amount, but you know, some kind of. Uh... Some regular cadence would be ideal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. At the moment, like we could pattern match a little bit after uh, Lighthouse, which does monthly tournaments. I think that might. Okay push things a little uh, but certainly you know I would love to see more maybe like bi-monthly yeah we'll, we'll see what happens it, it probably correlates with like the end of the season given like tier lists and other sort of duties that people want to sink time into as well yeah I think the hardest part would just be like coming up with a cat prize pool every time you know it that I don't think is a huge deal no, you know, most eventually, like dona donations, right? Exactly. I mean, like, initial was me, and then Tom Dog, and then, you know, people just gain more and more traction, and then you've got this hype train type of effect mm -hmm. where people start matching each other's donations, and the, the charity and the donations lead to more and more. I think, like, there's some sort of future vision where you could have, you know, actual sponsorship. Um, that oh, might yeah. be quite far off into the future, but I'm a dreamer, I'm an optimist. We'll see what's actually possible. That'd be great. I mean, like just seeing how much your channel grew over this one tournament, like I was blown away. Like no way I could have expected that. But you know, if you don't ask, you can't get. So. <laughs> and then yeah, and then I've seen some of your streams after the tournament, and they seem to have a lot more uh, people on average than huge. Yeah, yeah. the The average viewership has skyrocketed, and the outpouring of love and support has just really kickstarted things. And I'm blown away. It's incredible. Oh. Yeah, see, Brick Nick, I know sometimes you say that uh, we it can be a very toxic community, and it definitely can be at times, but, you know, there's a lot of good people and a lot of... Uh, I absolutely agree. Like, there is always the, the highlights, the silver lining to the cloud, and I think I wouldn't put so much of my time and energy if I didn't also believe that. Like, there is a lot of positivity, a lot of love, a lot of people who are just so worth, you know, giving back to. And, you know, there's a reason I keep coming back to this community. I just love the people here. Yeah, me too. It's just, I think that's what draws most people to it is first it's the competitive among us, but then it's just like a community. There's something nice about playing with the same players and uh, absolutely growing yeah. with, you know, just all the, all the fun things that come along with that. Totally. And it's the same way that, like, it's more fun to play with people, you know, compared to just total strangers. Like that exactly. is not the same experience. Like it's good that everyone tries hard and you've sort of got like a baseline level of skill, but there's a lot more interest to it when you sort of have people's metas start playing out and their personalities come through. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for sort of the human element here. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Cool, man. So yeah, tell me like, what would you like to like discuss today? What are some of your top hits and notes you want to get to? Oh, uh, let's see. Um... I think one thing we could discuss is the idea of uh, coaching because I know oh yes Good. we have we have some different views. I think I think in, at the end we have a lot of similar views, but uh, I'd be interested to see what your thoughts on on coaching and like what the best system to sort of implement would be, like what would be an ideal system and what do you think would be a more realistic one. 
totally i think the best system is the one we can commit to like some sort of start and getting some traction is way better than just um you know an idea so getting something kickstarted like a grassroots effort i think is the way to go and then like get feedback on tweaks and adjustments and sort of iterate on it in the same way that you know like static and i were sort of talking about like let's make an among us documentary and then he's like oh, yeah. keeps putting it off because he doesn't know where to start but this organic series of interviews i think is kind of like people are streaming the documentary of among us like there's already something like 30 hours of content um yeah I obviously that would have to be edited down but if you were to make some sort of netflix hit or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been following the interview you've been doing i think it's really cool you have like a really wide variety of types of people from someone who's new to ranked or you know some of the top players from the last season or just you know uh you did an interview with bill the other day that yeah uh, i'm been meaning to check out just really really great look at uh at the you know purple among us community absolutely man like i've just really enjoyed speaking with everyone and like the level of maturity and level-headedness and insight and introspection that everyone's brought to these interviews has also far exceeded my expectations i didn't really know what to expect going in but like people have had some incredible insights and like i really appreciate people's time here absolutely it's really interesting to see like just all the different perspectives people have in terms of the game and how it's run and you Mm -hmm. know just all the various things right i mean when you think about it how many hours are we putting into this video game? Like, <laughs> an absolute ton. So, of course, people have sort of thought about the the metagame and the community and all the sort of other players, and they have their opinions and their little cliques and like stories and arcs, and there's drama. There's a whole like adventure of stories and intertwining narratives. I think it's so fascinating to learn about it all. Yeah, definitely. So if you were in an anime about Among Us, <laughs> what would be your sort of uh, exaggerated persona? What are some of the traits that the artists would highlight in you? And like, what would be the funny interactions you'd have with other anime members? Oh, that's a, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> uh, definitely wouldn't be the main character, that's for sure. Oh, a- not the protagonist. Interesting. So no, some I'd sort of supporting cast? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. I uh, I think in uh, I think one thing I, I I think could work on in terms of my among us skills is controlling comms more because I tend to sort of sit back and sort of listen to all the information that's being gathered and mm. and instead of trying to take control, which hurts me as an imp, I think because without the ability to, I mean, I can you know try, but I'm not the best at it. That's something I need to work better at. So you'd be like the strong silent type in the anime, like all jacked up <laughs> but like really calm, even expression, you know, muscly but not speaking much, you know? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I, I like that. Cool, cool, I like it. Awesome then. What about you? What would you be? What would I be? Hmm. I think I would see myself as um what's the name of the guy with like the eye patch in Naruto? Uh oh. Kakashi Sensei or something? Shit, what's his name? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Akashi. Is that it? I forget. Something like that. I guess I could Google it, but basically... The teacher, right? The teacher, yeah. The one who's, like, trying to keep all the kids... (laughs) I could definitely see that. You do feel like the dad of the server. Right, from getting out of control and, like, bringing some level-headedness and, like, maybe I'm washed or whatever, but every now and then I can bring out some <laughs> skill. Yeah, you're, you're special move. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like, yeah, there's some sort of dad strength in there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really like and appreciate how, like, you do seem to try to, like, uh, bring out the more positive and wholesome sides of the uh, community. You know, you're, you're a very wholesome person, never toxic to anyone. And, uh, and I think that helps with other people who maybe aren't as non-toxic yeah it's had a like relatively positive reception there are a few holdouts like people who insist that toxicity is sort of by design or who like refuse to change and i think that's Mm -hmm. sort of just the reality like if you've lived in this community for so long and you found yourself to rise up the ranks then yeah you start like controlling the narrative of what's acceptable as a respected member of the community and like what's okay and who's allowed to play and it becomes a bit elitist 
and then I think about like, okay, well, what's our objective here? We do want, in my mind at least, we do want the ranked community to grow and we want everyone to play better and better. Like everyone likes seeing a sweaty lobby and yeah. everyone likes to have their skill tested and prove themselves. Um, and it's more validating to win when it's challenging. So Definitely. to have consistent lobbies of high skill, we need to be committed to growth. We need to sort of be willing to admit when we've made mistakes. Uh, because it's very tempting after a game is lost to blame others but there's mm. always something that every single player could have done better and mm. it's so easy to point to the weak link and say they threw the game but in reality it is a team game and every single person could have played better and when we can get to that level of maturity and growth i think we can really like improve the community experience for new people who will always be the ones with the most room for improvement <clears throat> but also the sort of experience of joining will be more positive, wholesome, and welcoming. Like I remember when I uh, jumped into an improv group, I didn't know much about improv at all. And so I was a total noob. Um, and of course, as soon as the improv session ended or like when any one of these little skits ended, they could have been like, Bricknick, you're so bad, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> that was such a shit scene, right? Like they could have done that. But instead they were just so positive, wholesome, welcoming praising exactly. the little things I did well and then giving gentle notes about like here are some things to think about and like demonstrating by leading by example and being warm and inclusive and really welcoming the person first and then building up the performer later because everyone's performance will increase over time as long as they're willing to come back and that's all about mm -hmm. treating people like people uh, Raka is from the stream just told me it is Kakashi Hatake uh, thank you for Googling that. It is indeed <laughs> Kakashi Sensei that I was trying to remember the name of. Uh, by the yeah, way, that's you for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My sister did an incredible um, cosplay as Kakashi. I think I can try to pull that up while we think about our next questions. I'd be, maybe I'd be, if, if we're going specifically with Naruto, the guy, who's the guy with the shadows? Who just like? Oh, yeah. That's another good call out. What's his name? I guess we need Raka or chat to help <laughs> yeah, us Raka. out a bit. Who is the guy that manipulates everything with the shadows? I think he was promoted to Jonin before anyone else as well. I think so, yeah. He won the first... Uh, or maybe not Jonin. Maybe it's the, the one below that, Whatever, right? Whatever's the first Chunin, one. yeah? <laughs> this is bringing back some memories. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since I've watched Dude, it. Dude, early Naruto, that stuff was amazing. Yeah, I never really got into too much after they did the uh, the time skip, but like... The right, movies, right. Really good. Exactly. Um, Naruto... Uh, yeah, whatever the reboot is after he gets a bit older. I think it yeah. lost some of its, its magic. But then again, some of the older stuff, like there's a lot of filler episodes where they're not really advancing the plot as well. That's true. I, I tend to skip stuff like that. Yep, yep. It's all about the action. At the very least, the uh, the fight scenes. Uh, Shikamaru, yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, right. Shikamaru, is that right? Who's the guy that does the, the animals? Was that not Shikamaru? Uh, you know, the one that has... Yeah, yeah, Kibo or something like that. That's right, yeah. So oh, Shikamaru yeah, is probably the... Cool. Yes, exactly. Shikamaru, I think, is indeed the Shadow Master. Um, very cool. Yeah, All right, so were... is this an interview about Naruto? Or... <laughs> no, 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 back, to, back to what you were saying about, like, uh, new players and... Uh, yeah, toxicity. totally. I, I definitely think, like, it, it is a lot... E like, for a lot of people, uh, you know, it's a lot easier when, when somebody throws a game to just get upset and you know they cost you MMR when really the thing that I think would help not only them but everybody else would be to you know ask them you know figure out where they went wrong and try to make uh, constructive criticism into how they can improve in the future because I know like when I uh, first started playing in, in ranked I probably wasn't the best <laughs> like most people definitely but, I uh, mean we all start somewhere right it's not like people are born great there's a lot of yeah. hard work that comes in and then like having someone support you along the way makes all the difference definitely definitely I mean you can be the poor orphan boy with a nine-tailed fox inside you and be excluded <laughs> in your community and succeed in spite of that but you know if you have the love and support of a family or a family that like builds up around you with a community I think it's just so much more wholesome and rewarding I agree yeah and it's just the new players are the lifeblood of the server. You know, you kind of exactly. need new players to keep the thing going. So. And they will be bad and they will throw and that's okay. Mm -hmm. We welcome you with loving, warm, open arms all the same. 
Yeah, yeah, and that's where I think, I think that's where the coaching can benefit most is people who are like just starting out. Because, I mean, once you hit a certain skill level, you can always improve. Yes. But I think they just need to learn like the fundamentals, right? Of, like what? Because not initially, to do. you don't know what you don't know. So it's all exactly. unknown unknowns, and therefore it's very difficult to improve on your own. You'll just go into a lobby, you'll lose, and you don't know why. You're not sure how everyone knew their info. You look at the admin table, you just get overwhelmed. You're like, okay, yeah. I don't know what's going on, and these people just figured it out. I guess I'll never play this game again. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> eventually yeah. I mean, you get no, to a point where you can see your own growth areas. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and going from like just casual servers to ranked is like such a big jump. Because I know when I was playing in casual servers, I... I felt like, oh, this is too easy, you know, like, yeah, yep. it almost got to a point of the game where, you know, just, it's almost not fun, because it's, I'm not saying I was completely destroying every public lobby, but then when you get to range, you're like, oh, I'm maybe not so good at this game. Yeah, but dude, <laughs> do you remember, life? like, super early days, like, when you first pulled up Among Us? Like, I remember this, like, I think that maybe the second ever game or first ever game, I was Imposter. And then I run up and like, oh, there's a vent button. I hit that and someone sees me vent openly. So they button me out. I'm like, oh, this is a fun game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta learn to some degree. Right, like, right, right. How the game works. And then once you learn how the game works, you have to learn all the, the meta behind playing it to like the yep. highest level. Exactly. I always, always think like competitive Among Us is kind of a funny thing because it's not like a game that you would necessarily think to have like a competitive sort of yeah like, exactly it's a casual party game but then people yeah. have uh sweated it up and decided like no this is where i'll dedicate the better portion of my youth it's like if people <laughs> were playing like ranked pictionary or something right dude there's even um competitive world tournaments in rock paper scissors which <laughs> it like sounds that. absurd but it turns out there's a meta and there are mind games in play for instance, what do you associate with rock? It is a uh, symbol of strength and power, right? As opposed to paper, which is known as like the weaker, indeed. softer, more like underhanded way of winning. And mm -hmm. then scissors is something more cunning and devious. So now like it takes a certain type of personality to throw paper three times in a row versus throwing rock three times in a row. And it says a lot about you as an individual, depending on how you play that game. Yeah, and then if you're playing against the same people, you'll develop certain metas against them. Like, yep. I know this guy does this for... I know he loves playing rock, or yep. he loves doing the same uh, thing three times in a row. Or, yep, yep, exactly. You, know, that's, that's you where can start metering people in the same way that you know they're imp based on their voice, not necessarily their actions. Although, to be honest, I've seen a lot of people who are meta-clearing people these days, and then they just end up being imp. Yeah, man, I got meta-cleared for being on cams. That felt good. <laughs> you were imp? Yes, I was imp. And then another fun one was back in the day, I used to always run under storage at the start of the game as imp. And then mm -hmm. Hyper checked there and he saw I wasn't there. So he hard cleared me for the rest <laughs> of the game and I just slaughter him after he hard clears me. That was a fun game. That's the tricky thing is when like certain players are like certain players can develop more of a meta on you, whether it's just like your voice or the yep. things you do and uh... It, it becomes tricky because then you have to kill those players first. Yes, the ones who can <laughs> suss you out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're top of your hit list. Even if there are other people who are maybe mechanically better, yeah, you need yeah. to get rid of the ones who can suss you out. <laughs> yeah, because I know there's, there's certain people, I think uh, I was playing with Homework and Squirrel recently and Homework was saying Squirrel has a good meta on him and uh, he just, when we were in together, he squir I squir like second round, Squirrel's just like caught him. Like <laughs> yeah. It's the same reason I try to, like, kill off Raka, because she's always suspicious of me. <laughs> I think Raka's always suspicious of everyone. Maybe that's the maybe, case. Maybe maybe a little more, you know, maybe a little more you, but... Might be. She's, yeah, she's yeah. suspicious of me sometimes, too. <laughs> anyone like, that's, like, anyone that's recently talked to me about my YouTube videos will start saying they can meta me, and then I'm like, okay, mm. well, I have to kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it would be a lot harder in your case because you stream so much so people can like sure. watch watch your games and like not only you know get like they, they can see the difference between when yes they can see both sides now it used to be that I only publish imp games and then mm. people are like okay he always does this as imp and then I just do it as crew and it's like okay well now what but now you can yeah. see both but yeah. I definitely think that the streaming has been a, a big help it's, it's amazing how many like streamers we have in the community and it's so great to like when you're in the middle of something and you can't dedicate your 
time to playing you can just have it on in the background and see i love that yeah. i remember like it sucks when the lobby is full or there's like two full lobbies and you can't play for a while but then as yeah. long as you can watch the stream you can still be part of the fun absolutely it, yeah and it, cheer it, them it, along or like see like cool kills and stuff like that yeah and that's where i think like i think for players who are starting out and trying to improve that's probably the best way to do it in my opinion absolutely is, yeah and it's more engaging than just pulling up super old youtube videos because you know that it's current meta. yeah 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 exactly and like just pay attention to what they're doing and how they act as crew how they act as amp and and uh, i think that's like the best way to do it. and also i think like i would love to see the the clips channel be used a little more for like or or i think homework had a really good idea before which is make like a a separate channel that's like just like game theory talking about like where pay players can uh, theory crafter yeah that's actually a cool idea like maybe there should be some official channels like it's cool that i have a channel and a twitch and whatever but you know as i was casting the tournament i was like this really should just be a purple twitch just like we should have a purple youtube a purple facebook it's a purple twitter yada yada um that yeah. way it can be like not about like one personal self-promotion but we could all add to a catalog and then you know we can like collectively build it just like a wiki we could have a purple wiki you know yeah. and document exactly what strats are in meta what's off meta um yeah i think there could be a lot to be said for that that would be very cool i think anything that's why i think the tournament was so good for the community anything that just uh is an engagement like you know like sometimes during the season it'll things will maybe get a little slow especially during the week when people are busy with school and work where right. maybe only have one lobby or even not any lobbies going but like we saw how big the, the turnout for the tournament was and yeah. things like tier lists and the, the start of the season just having continuous like events really helps i think the other good thing like um type def in the chat is saying you can you can catch more when you're watching rather than playing i definitely learned a lot by watching and casting the tournament because the pressure's off, you've got more of your brain power dedicated to analyzing the game compared to thinking about things like, you know, who you're supposed to vote right now or like what tasks you're going to do, what party you're going to do. All of that will go away because you can just look at the decisions that are being made and think about the more macro game instead of the micro. Yeah, absolutely. Although it is, it is easy to fall into a trap when you're backseat gaming. Like, it's so much harder in the moment. To definitely know absolutely right like it's easy with the benefit of hindsight with the benefit of like having a panel where you can sort of throw out your thoughts and there's not much on the line way harder if you're putting a thousand dollars up for grabs and then you have to play your sweatiest in the game oh, and yeah. do your best like live after playing for eight hours straight you know it, it's very easy to crack under the pressure yeah you have to it's a it's a marathon and that not only that but you you know that like you get down to that final lobby, a lot of people are watching that and a lot of people are paying attention and you don't want to be the guy who, uh, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with, with throwing. <laughs> yeah, sure. But I mean, but you will you feel bad. Exactly. You and I mean, like, it, probably, yeah. it only really takes throwing one crew game to tank your chances in the tournament. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it was it was interesting to see the sort of, I don't, none of the, none of the players really developed a meta in terms of the points, but it was interesting to see, like, what, there was some some of that going on. I think X Y Z was one of the the better people who were kind of figuring out more of what was good for the tournament rather than the game itself, which maybe is not good for a tournament setting. Maybe you keep those things hidden so that players right. don't. Do we that. did think about that. Like there was a lot of debate about like how much openness to have with the point mm -hmm. system, for example, because it can skew the way people play. Like X Y Z Z openly sort of like plays towards the points. Uh, you know, not finishing 50-50s if he feels like he can maximize his own score, maybe even acting a little bit sus to avoid, like, helping others in the tournament. Like, he's very individualistic. And that's why, like, there was an argument for concealing all of the inner mechanics and workings in the same way that the moderation team doesn't give literally every single rule as a written rule. There's a lot of sort yeah. of discretion and understanding within the moderation team around what to do in certain situations so as to not overly have people sort of study for the test as opposed yeah, yeah. to like playing the the best way they can that makes sense <clears throat> so bat um what are some of your favorite streams that you like to tune into when you're sort of not playing 
Uh, let's see. I like I watched a lot of uh, Ludwig. I think he's pretty funny. He he moved to YouTube instead of Twitch mm-hmm. recently, but I like watching his streams. He's 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 the one who I sort of like all the big among us streamers. I never really watched many of them, but I watched him and he played with most of them. So that's how I uh, learned of like Five Up or you know like a lot of the big streamers that I think right right made the game popular. Um, yeah, cool. I, I like I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I like watching YouTube videos. Usually, I don't do long streams, but uh, I, I like watching more of like the vods a bit later. So what are some more. YouTube videos that you'd recommend? Uh, I watch a lot of like uh, channels that do like interesting video essays. Like there's there's one nerd writer, um, just different essays on uh, popular culture or movies or uh, I, I like stuff like that. I'm a big movie fan. Cool, cool. Um, coming back to Among Us, I'm going to shout out this video by Pryor. So we had that first coaching video from XYZZ where he sort of talks about high-level strategies. And then Pryor came out with a much lesser publicized video, but I think it's actually incredible and definitely recommend it. It's in my stream chat. This is a video that tells you mechanically what to do as a crewmate in terms of which tasks to do when and how to sort of like maximize your survivability and the different tiers of how scared and safe to play, depending on whether you're a crewmate with med base scan or whether you're just a typical crewmate, like where you are in the round, how many people are alive, like what tasks you have. Definitely check that out. I think it's especially good for sort of like mid-level players and especially new players who are trying to learn how to not die in Death Note. I watched that one. It was, I do think that's a really great video for new players. It sort of introduces them to the the things that uh, are part of ranked that aren't part of more casual, fun, sort of, among yes. us. Absolutely. Right, I mean, in a casual lobby, you might hear things like, oh, you know, we're not going to kill you if you're AFK and drop ship. Whereas ranked, yeah. it's like, if you're AFK, you're getting disconnected. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> the amount of sweatiness and seriousness definitely amps up when it comes to MMR being involved. Yeah, I think more videos like that and the one you made with uh, X, um, I think that stuff like that in... Uh, in lieu of a, like a actual like coaching system, I think those are the best things that we we could have to uh, sort of helping newer players improve. And uh, yeah, so Bat, I mean, like on this larger topic of coaching, um, how do you see us getting started? So videos is one idea, as you've suggested, and like how do we go about building some of those videos? Who do you want to hear from? Um, I think the top the top players in their respective fields, like the top imps, people who are really good at that. Yeah. So I mean, some examples. Uh, well, I mean, Saitama is obviously really good. He blew everyone away with that tournament win. Um, so a home- coaching video from Sai around Imp or just in general? Uh, for Imp especially, the thing is, I wonder if he would even share a lot of his like top level secrets. That, but the thing, another thing is, he's good because he he just has. It's just a kind of. It's almost. There's some stuff you can't learn. There's just. He has a, a, a good way of like processing information and yep. selecting like what is useful and that's and true. Some of that out. comes with experience, but you can also like give tips on that, like Absolutely. what type of information to ignore, who to listen to, like specifically who's likely to give good info, all those sorts of tips. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Okay, so that's definitely one. I'll put that on the books, like go check in with Sai and encourage him to make an imp video. What else would you like to hear? Um like I said, I think a channel, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe more, I don't know if you would just incorporate it to the Clips channel or make a new channel, but something that, that involves more of, of like the sort of going over people's VODs and, and yeah, so especially people. I, I already floated sort of the idea of having an officially supported coaching system and there was a bit of resistance. I think why, maybe, why resistance? I'm, I didn't actually get a clear answer on why. All that was spoken about there was we won't do it. So I have mm. to sort of like connect the dots. And my guess is that it's just a lot of work for the moderation yeah. team. That, and that the imagine. appetite from the community is not that rich. Because there's a, a lot of people that already see themselves as good and not in need of coaching. When in reality, everyone could improve from it. It's just like somewhat mixed reception. The way that a lot of sort of unfortunately immature like toxic individuals think of coaching is those new players need it and no one else does yeah i mean that's not true there's different levels for sure like uh you know once you get to the mid level like 
there's there's things that you can learn like the, the, uh, starting with the new players and the fundamental is a good start yep. but yeah i would love to see uh more tips that are uh more like videos and and sort of coaching things aimed at more of like an upper middle kind of player who maybe yeah like right so like okay if year. if you are looking for the upper middle stuff i think the only way is really speaking to a few really well-known people yeah. Um, and then probably not going to want to do a lot of sort of the one-on-one -on -one sessions, but just recording some videos is a pretty high yeah, leverage yeah. activity. I've, talk, I've talked to a couple of people and yeah. they said, uh, show me some of your VODs of games that yeah. you think would be uh, uh, Sure, and I think them. like this is definitely something that we could do is look over a few VODs and give critical feedback. Definitely. Yeah. I think whether that's just using the Clips channel or, or whatever, but... Right. Uh, or And it also, people need to approach it with it like people you kind of have to ask for it i guess like this is also that. like a like potentially paid opportunity like in any very serious ranked game there are paid coaches yeah uh, and i mean i've paid a coach to learn a bit more about dota 2 for example so i think that there would be like a subset of people like most people playing among us probably like younger student type of uh not a lot of money but on the other hand, like there could be some sort of donation type system or like someone could win it or like, I don't know, there could be a way of just like using people's goodwill as well. Like XYZ did the coaching video for free. I'm sure that like if people made the trust and the bond, like there would be an opportunity to have their VODs reviewed. Yeah. And, the, and the also just a big part of that is, is making friends with people in the community because yeah. that's that's the best way is just run right. into people and they can they can either whether they were in the game with you or you show them your VOD after they can tell you what they think you did wrong or yeah exactly like, I think more we can I, help I each other out like it doesn't have yeah. to be purely transactional either absolutely yeah I think that's the best way for new players to to get in is just start being a part of the community and and just just be in there I mean you're gonna you're gonna probably throw in the beginning. You're gonna make mistakes. So right. The best thing you could do is try to mitigate those mistakes. And uh, dude, imagine if it was like Naruto school style, right? And we could have like tune in entrance exams. <laughs> yeah, <different laughs> that would be that would be interesting. That'd be really fucking cool, man. Like have some sort of classroom set up. You know, you could imagine some sort of hangout call mm -hmm. where you know someone is the teacher presenting some materials about like what's the current meta or like what to do as imp or crew and then like it's full of new people who want to get into ranks and then they have to pass an exam <laughs> yeah i mean that'd be great there, there would be good uh i mean I, I don't know if there should be like a, a i think there's been some talk about what how like how strictly to filter like new players in because right it does a lot of the the uh, regular people kind of get do get annoyed when because that's the thing about among us is the weakest link kind of Yes, it, a, a very bad player can drag down a whole lobby, and yeah. as a good imp, you keep that player alive. You don't oh, kill him. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to become the best at the game. You just have to become fundamental, so that you're not dying in bad yes. places. You're giving as as much information as you can to the players who are able to more exactly uh, just like disseminate it. Coming back to the Naruto example, like if you are not taking time away from having to be like if you are needing protection all the time and you're using up the ninja's time <laughs> then you are a negative contribution to the lobby right whereas if you are at least holding your own and you don't need to be like babysat or whatnot then mm -hmm. you can start like thinking about adding value and eventually develop your own superpowers exactly another big thing for new players is i would say one like one of the biggest things that they could easily fix is is misclears like you should just focus on not clearing someone yeah. unless you're like a hundred percent sure that yes. they did not get that kill. And if yep. you're not sure, then just say it. Say, say err on the side of conservative. Like, yeah. don't give a clear unless you're sure. So there's a say, question here from Type Def. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah, that's fine. A question from Type Def saying, "What do you think about people being a bit harsher so they learn not to do what was wrong?" So I have mixed feelings about this. I think that there's a way to make your words sound very serious and be extremely clear that a new player has vastly underperformed 
without resorting to calling them like personal insults or insulting their weight or appearance or any of that sort of stuff or like telling them to quit and never come back all of that stuff is unhelpful because it's not related to the behavior that was wrong if you instead focus on the mistakes and tell them just how much it costs the crew and why that's making you less likely to want to play with them again then it's much more sort of informative rather than just toxic yeah i mean it's completely understandable to get upset when like someone throws the game yeah but it just doesn't need to become like Hated. insult like you can be you yeah. can be upset you can be annoyed you can but you shouldn't take it out on them you shouldn't right. uh yeah so let's just like uh, go through a role play example here suppose bat is a new player and he shot a med bay on four <laughs> right and we lose the game um right so i could be saying bat you're the worst player ever what are you doing never play this game i hate yeah, you quit game, ranks quit. uninstall the game delete it like your parents will never love you all this sort of stuff <laughs> is just like <laughs> yeah completely horrible who take it to a much higher level where they it becomes like a personal thing like they'll call them like subhuman trash and stuff and it's like dude like it's right a game exactly it's a and like game and that's another game. thing that's used to justify that behavior is saying oh because it's a game i'm allowed to be all toxic how about I mean, no? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you could be toxic, but if, that, if that's the case, you're just an asshole. Exactly, right? Like, think about what this reflects on you as a person. Like, what do you want to be known as? Just a, I think yourself a, of... a piece of human trash? Because if you are willing to stoop to that level, then, you know, people will see your true colors. I could be wrong, but I do think a lot of the most toxic people are sometimes the younger people who don't sort of... That's definitely know. the case. Like, yeah. I don't know how old you are, Bat, but, like, you do seem a little bit more mature and level-headed, and I do notice, like, even myself when I was younger, I would also act more like the toxic people around me until mm -hmm. I realized, like, oh, you know, you can sort of grow out of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a senior in college, so I'm probably on the slightly older scale. Of, yeah, I mean, for this community, base. I'd say so, right? Like, there's a lot of high school students, people sort of, like, barely above the Discord minimum age, if we're being right, real, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, and I think those are the ones who tend to be the most toxic and i'm not sure what you can really even do about a lot of them because it's like it's tough kinda... right because they got really good at something before they really got good at learning how to navigate complex social situations mm, so it's very yeah, easy yeah. to just like scream at people because you have this inflated ego um and yeah, that definitely. It, it holds you back it actually like you could be incredibly good at the game but people will like withhold opportunities from you because of the to toxicity absolutely because um, it affects everyone around who, you yeah there's some players who aren't even good at the game who are super toxic mm -hmm. it's like bro you just threw like two games yesterday what are you talking right about? right like look in the mirror always like always think about what you yourself could do better like don't resort to hurling insults at others like always admit some fault yeah i agree with that for sure yeah i think that's something that uh we could definitely improve in the community and just just make it a more chill easy going like absolutely you know it doesn't it, any kind of competitive game is gonna i don't want to say a level of toxicity because that's not necessarily true but it is anything that's competitive by nature is going to be people are going to take it seriously like there yeah, will be some exactly. sweatiness i think that that's completely reasonable and that's people will thing. have heightened emotions and they will be very passionate about the outcome and the performance of those around them that's I mean, all really the, healthy and like that means that they're going to be committed to informing the people who need to get better here are the things you did wrong that can all be done really respectfully or it can be done in a really horrible way and there are some people that are like unapologetically horrible and those Absolutely. people probably need to reflect on that and like the impact it's having yeah i, I do think like the, the 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 sort of sweatiness is part of what makes ranked among us so great because it's like it's just sometimes the, the people who just who went from casual to ranked right. a lot of them i think we're looking for more of a challenge or yes like, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the sweatiness that is like yeah. the defining feature of a ranked game like no, it sucks when you get into a lobby where it's kind of degenerating and people just right. uh, if there starts just, being trolling it's like okay take it seriously you're here in ranked because you're trying your best if you're not yeah. trying your best then like go back to casual yeah, it's, I mean, it's fine to have a non-serious lobby it's just this is not the place yeah exactly I don't mind playing a meme game here and there but yeah. like, uh, it, it, it is the fun thing about uh, ranked among us is sort of the competitive nature and and there, there it's it's definitely possible to be competitive and and uh, challenge you know like try to try to get the highest up on the leaderboard without right. sort of shitting on the people below you yep yep 
So, Bat, this is all really helpful. Um, coming back again to the coaching thing, um, what are you yourself like willing to commit to? Um, I mean, I would, uh, I would imagine like I probably would only be too beneficial to like newer or more like lower ranked players. So I'm probably like a mid, maybe maybe upper mid. If you I'm see yourself nice as like a, a a regular tune in. <laughs> yeah. I think so I'm solid. I think I got a lot of the fundamentals. I think I've definitely improved in the uh, in the however many months, six months I've been playing. Or no, it's, I guess it's been longer than that. I started, you, I started playing. Do you happen sometime. to remember some like new people you've encountered recently that you'd like to shout out and, and offer like a free coaching session with? Um, I mean, I, I think I think I mentioned that you, you interviewed Cal the other day. He had that game. I would. He wants me to go through the game with him and because he he threw on three uh and if he wants me to like go through the game with him and show him what i was thinking cool. at certain parts and i would love to even hear what he thinks i could have done better to persuade him definitely and you know sometimes even just asking people the right questions and helping them arrive at the answer can be incredibly valuable you might not yeah. even need to tell him anything but just the fact that you're willing to be there as a sounding board and a, someone to reflect ideas on i think will go a long way yeah, absolutely. I agree with that, hundred percent. Cool, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to set something up. You know, it could even be the three of us if you'd like. We just have like an open discussion, review the vod. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Cool. I think it'd be I think it'd be really interesting. Bat cow breakneck. Let's get it on the books. There's like two animals going on here. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a farm. My daughter could make the cow noise. She says mm. "muh" <laughs> for that. Don't think she can make a breakneck noise yet, but she does say "data." And What's a bat uh, noise? I don't know about bat, but she can do bird, which is like, uh, uh, like maybe tweet, like a, tweet. So maybe like a, a similar thing for bat, of, like a yeah, yeah, yeah. squealing. Some kind of echo location, I'd imagine. Exactly. We'll see what she can figure out. Yeah, but yeah. I, bat cow breakneck um, coaching session. Do you have the VOD from the game, by the way? I think he does. I think he streamed it. I, ha I think I do also have the VOD from my perspective, too. Yeah. Great. If you can I'll, prepare that, and I'll reach yeah. out to, to cow. Um, and see if he's down because this is sounding I'm pretty, sure I'm pretty cool yeah I think that'd be great for for newer players and just uh, a sort of breakdown of uh, of a game and I'm sure there are things that, that I could have done better to to persuade him or I, I think even Rocka said on 4 that I just wasn't sounding that persuasive which is something that I would love to figure out what I, how I can do to change that Cool, man. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I just reached out to Cow. Let's see what he says. Um, yeah, Cow, by the way, has a lot of respect from our sister server, Waffle. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of Waffle, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Waffle. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so the, the players in Waffle have a lot to say, uh, a lot of respect for Cow. Even though he's new to Purple, uh, he does have the respect of his peers there. So I think he's going to be wholesome genuine guy and i mean from that one interview alone i think he's solid decent, yeah I, decent I, saw dude. Part, I saw part of that stream he seems like a, a nice interesting guy and i talked to him briefly after the game uh and you know he the thing is he he seemed like he was willing to uh to he knows that he made mistakes yes and he's willing to reflect and look back do you know what he has better from those mistakes he has a growth mindset absolutely that's the most important thing for new players yep that is advice I would give any player, not just new players, like always have a growth mindset. If you yeah, have a fixed from... mindset, if you assume that you're right and that everyone else is wrong, you're going to limit yourself. Like always yeah. be willing to entertain the possibility that you could be wrong and that you still have room to grow, you still have things to learn. Never stop learning in your entire life. Like there's always something you can improve. No I one is perfect. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and like when you do throw or even just make a mistake, you know, go back. That's why I think recording VODs is, is really beneficial for new players or any even experienced players to review and uh, see like what could I have done better or Definitely. where did I go wrong? Because yeah. in the moment you're making these like split second decisions. You're, yes, it's heated. People it will be screaming. imperfect. You have to do it all in real time, so there will be errors. But getting those Absolutely. habits down, getting the muscle memory that will like reduce the chance of the errors. They're never going to go yeah. completely away. Like everyone throws a tiny bit 
moment yeah, by moment. Of course. Because like your movement could always be like pixel by pixel slightly optimized. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at, at some level that does, doesn't matter as much as like your macro decisions about who you voted um, uh -huh. and like what you did in the meeting. If you are talking for most of the meeting, you're probably also throwing. Like the, the way, big tip way, I have yeah. for everyone is learning when to shut up. <laughs> Absolutely, there there are some players who like to control meetings and uh, and they won't uh, listen to what some of the other people have to say. And right. one of those people could have the the key bit of information that unlocks everything. Exactly, sort of, give people a chance to speak and yeah. open the chat for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, I love I love writing the chat. I, yes, when, when and if people screaming, don't read it, you are not doing the best you can like there will be way, information in the chat it's a great way to sort of get information without actually if people without are clogging a, exactly yeah, because there will be someone that's just dominating the mic and you have to type out oh it turns out i'm a hard clear maybe you should be yeah. listening to me right like, definitely check the chat that's yes. that's huge this is much more efficient as well compared to having to constantly ask people to clear comms because that's such an yeah. inefficient use of the meeting is just spending meeting time telling people to meet better. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, everyone... ideally the meeting should be very mechanical. You know, the person who reported the body or the button speaks first. We identify the hard clear. We listen to the hard clear. Like that could be such an easy flow. Yeah, and I mean, I, I do see the point of like it does help when a lobby has like a couple people who are able to sort of take control of the meeting. Sure, it's people are lost and sort of guide it but it's not there's a trap there right that person could be the imposter exactly that's why it's good to have a few of them so that they, that they can question each other right but it's also that's why the crew members need to also question that person don't let them go by if they just say okay well it's between this person and this person this person right ask, if you well, sheep why is it not between you if you sheep and like believe someone just because they're giving lots of information that person yeah. just found out how to win a zimp exactly you don't don't sheep like if the person's hard clear, then yeah, you can take. Right. You know, if they're if they're med scan and it's confirmed by someone else, then yep. okay, then you can. If you know they're a good player, then you take their advice. But like, I think a lot of the the players who are really good at crew also end up getting a huge advantage with poster because people are more they're more persuasive. Exactly. People are more likely to listen to. They'll do what you is. say, uh, even if you are imp. <laughs> and so you can just command them to vote off crewmates. Like, yeah, the, uh, I've been in plenty of games where that's happened, and it's so goddamn frustrating. Yep, yep. And it just takes people having a little bit of sort of confidence in their own abilities, and of course, like getting a bit better at the game and realizing when someone is dominating uh, too much on the mic yeah, and holding them yeah. accountable for that. I mean, like, shout out to Raka for really sort of calling this out when it happens. Uh, even with like a little bit of passive aggression saying things like oh I thought I was the one who reported the body or like is yeah. my mic not working <laughs> I do enjoy playing with Raka in that regard because I do feel like she sort of keeps people in check to try yes. to like, like what I was saying earlier like she, she always tries to get everyone's point of view like yep. not everyone maybe even has useful information sure. but just at least if someone wants to talk and they have something to say give them at least a, a, you know it doesn't have to be the whole meeting it doesn't have right. to be but Quarter give them a meeting. fair chance. Yeah, um, give them at least like 10 seconds. Exactly. Um, especially they if they're hard accusing someone. I was in a yeah, game with oh, Strangers especially. and Strangers got so frustrated because she had hard accused and then that just somehow got papered over and she gets voted. No, that's <laughs> that, is, that is one of the fucking worst things. Yep, yep. It was awful. Good times, good times. Yeah, yeah so it sounds like you've, you've done your part. You're committing to this Bat Cow Bricknick coaching session. I um, think that would be fun. I think it'd be interesting to... And then homework and, for me is go check in with Sai and encourage him to make an imp video. Yeah, I think that'd be really interesting from the guy who, who won the tournament. He's one of yeah. the better imps. And part, part of that is is because what we were talking about, like controlling comms, and people do tend to sheep for him a bit. Definitely. But he's also uh, def he's a good imp. I'm trying to think of what other people are like. What do you think are some of the top imps in the server? Hmm. I mean, I like to see Cheese play imp. I think he does, like not just good mechanical kills, but also good sort of like psychological manipulation. He knows how to read the room mm, and really yeah. figure out like how to sway votes the way he likes. Um, who else? I mean, Hufo does a really good job. Never unhappy to see him as your imp partner. Hufo is uh, great. I've gotten a bunch of wins with him. Yep. Always happy to see Ness having the red text on his name as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another sort of cracked imp partner yeah i mean there are so many i i think like anyone can do it um if they have 
the right attitude and there are some people that just naturally live and breathe imposter yeah, yeah yeah there's some really good ones out there i think we should try to get some more interviews with with some of these type def having six imposter wins in a row just leaving that fact out there not a bad stat there type def type, type def is a really great imposter too you, yeah good. I, 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 i'm just I not sure why he keeps getting banned like what's up with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd like to see him around more yeah 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 so um no smoke without fire i have to say like whatever's causing the bans i think just try to address that and then we can play more with you type def because i think that you bring a lot of value to the table it's just unfortunate that you're so unreliable in terms of being allowed to play <laughs> yeah he's a fun he's a fun guy to play with both is just a good player and just someone that you uh, enjoy playing with right and like um potentially a future caster oh yeah so, i think he would, i think he'd be great for that position i know he said he, he might be a little uh shy talking to sure but i mean like we connected offline i think he was reassured by the fact that we would have a casting team that would be nate jeweler myself and type def so yeah, uh, be, yeah i mean type def you have the game knowledge you have the community awareness you have the social standing you have the reputation he, people respect he can, you he can just be like the color commentary you just come in when he has something to say i think like anyone who's played this game for quite a while and knows what it's all about can add value as a caster then yeah. the rest of it is about learning how to like be good on the mic like don't mm -hmm. dominate the discussion too much like give everyone a space to talk think about engagement for the viewers uh, try to give like some analysis here and there but also just like make sure everyone's having a fun time if yeah, you're there I, like to prove that you're the best you're probably in it for the wrong reasons yeah i thought the nate did really well during uh especially Absolutely. Like when, you, when you had to go for a bit and he, he kind of took over i thought oh he, he crushed really it great job casting yeah he was great yeah i mean his back must just be so sore from carrying <laughs> the team there yeah <laughs> you know, it was really good nate goaded uh goaded caster much love goaded confirmed yes <laughs> absolutely okay but so i asked this of a lot of the interview candidates what was like one thing that comes to mind for you if you could wave a magic wand and fix something about the community what would it be mm. about anything sure well sometimes i feel like maybe it hasn't been happening as much recently sometimes Feel like the mods can be a little bit overzealous in their, mm. in their, uh, and I don't want to come on too hard because I know they put in a lot of work, uh, you know, not getting paid and, and keeping the server going. But sometimes, sometimes they can get a little, a little. I like one thing for example is, like unless it's like a really heinous violation, I think you should wait till someone's done with the game to rank block them because it kind of, you know. The rank blocking during the games is such an like epidemic. I hate that. It really it just, screws up the game because then they drop from the VC and it's like super scuffed gameplay from then on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unless it's like something where they, it's just like they have to go now. But like, I don't understand the advantage because they're already in the game and they're going to yeah. continue doing whatever yeah. harm they've been doing. It's just they're not going to be on the mic. Or a lot um, of times it's not even something that's happening during that game. It's something from you know, previous stuff. infraction or whatever shouldn't yeah. that just be like time delay or like can't we have an exception um while they're in the game it, it just seems like a bug you know i agree I, they, that's something that, that should be looked at and changed in my opinion that's cool i think that that's a very sort of doable um achievable thing to fix it just requires someone to go in and like assess the damage that this rank block uh thing is doing and and figure out a way to do it in a, a less destructive way. I think I think there's definitely better ways to do it. Absolutely. I mean that's that's not up for me to decide, but it's just uh, a so suggestion. then on the moderation team, like what is like a type of ruling that you see consistently being overzealous? Is it like that, or do you see like certain mods? Like I don't want to get into names, but is mm -hmm, there like yeah. a a class of rulings that you think we need to back off on? Um. It's very case by case basis. I okay. think it really depends. Um, so you're not like I, thinking specifically about like DCs or AFKs or trolling or clogging or like there's no there, specific rule that you want to focus in on here. No, there are little things here and there. Like I know they just came out with the new DC rule, and I was saying that like I think if you DC on ten before there's been a kill, like that should be the same as DCing in a loading screen. That shouldn't count unless it's happening, you know, a lot or right. just over and over again. Yeah, so um, but, the, the counterpoint to that is like some people will DC if they don't get imp. 
Yeah, but won't they just do that during the loading screen? Why would they wait? Yeah, and I mean, if they do that, then that's also problematic. <laughs> I agree, and I, and, and like, if, if it's, you, that's why maybe you keep track of how many, much times that's happening, and if it's like, you know, once every couple of weeks, then I, it's doubtful that they're doing that. If it's happening right. multiple times a day, or even a few times a week, then yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe something to look into. Definitely. But I don't know, there's not specific things. There's just, there's always moments where, you know, I feel like some people, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's hard to get into the details because you, you don't always know the situation. And if you, sure. do, if you do talk to somebody, you're getting a kind of biased. Uh, yeah, and I mean, maybe this is something that. you can sort of think on and uh, eventually leave a post in feedback suggestions with like a yeah, I'll, I'll think reasoned about opinion. That more and, yeah. And uh, let you know if I have an answer. Cool. If we, if we do that coaching thing or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, like, I've also had to sort of fight the battle of, like, getting rid of some of the bias in the moderation decisions, and mm -hmm. especially leaning in on the message that we don't really want people to have a conflict of interest. If you're moderating yeah, yeah, yeah. your own game, there's a huge conflict of interest, because everyone's in it for the MMR, and proving they're good and all that sort of thing, but a moderator should be there to make a fair, unbiased decision. I agree with that completely. I was actually in that game. Yeah. I, you, you must remember it, the one where... Yes, busting the bias. Home. Mm -hmm. We're home, home. Yeah, busting the bias. That's exactly yep. it. Yep. And, exactly. Uh, have you have you changed your mind at all? On you still think that? I think that was just a very complex situation. It, it is like, a complex situation, and I mean, some people frame it as uh, intentional trolling. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I think it's very difficult to prove someone's intent. Like maybe the player who did uh, vote wrong wasn't playing to the best of their ability, mm -hmm. or maybe they voted for the wrong reasons. Or maybe mm -hmm. they were distracted. They could have been all sorts of things. And we'll never truly know what was in their heart. Yeah, they, exactly. they never admitted to intent trolling. But the, the ruling at the time was that they're intentionally trolling. I think yeah. they were maybe just distracted or bad. None of which is the same as they are trying to throw. I think it's more a case of incompetence compared to... Or distraction. Like negligence. Maybe even recklessness. But I don't think there was any malice, which is what I the agree. ruling sort of intends. I've seen a few games where player where somebody just makes some terrible decision or they do something, you know, very devastating to the game mm -hmm. and end up throwing and people argue for unintentional and it's like, well, they just made a mistake, you know. I don't mm -hmm. think they were in or intentional throwing. I don't think they were intentionally trying exactly. to lose the game. And it's very it's, different. It's like, like it's it's clear cut if they admit. Then yeah. they've already sort of stated their intention, and then it's a very unequivocal ruling. But it gets very controversial when people push for intent throwing when someone has just made a like egregious mistake, because we've all done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's usually probably. I mean, you can't really know unless like you're able to read their mind what their intentions were. I think a lot right. of cases it could be just distraction and yeah. and you know that's an issue of whether they're certainly not playing to the best of their ability but whether it merits a cancel or not and your point right. of uh mods shouldn't moderate their own games like i yeah. think i agree with that i mean there's there's a there's a bias you're, if you're moderating your own game you're gonna like you know when 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 the cancel happens the crew is always usually always arguing for a crew you know for the the decision to crew win or cancel the crew. that's the <laughs> meme it's very rare that we get um you know a imp win out of a moderator being called yeah that's so rare also yeah. like if anything happens that disadvantages the crew it tends to be the case that the game will gravitate towards crew and or cancel <laughs> right yeah that's that's true like they they will they, they'll yeah it, there's definitely when yeah. imps win there's definitely more calls for cancel than right when uh yeah, I've, ne I've never really seen it for like, oh, um, crewmates win, let's cancel it because one of the imps, you know, something unfavorable happened to them. Never seen yeah. that happen. No, but no, it's I like almost it's almost happened. daily for the for the opposite. Yeah, yeah but I think part of that is the fact that like an imp loss isn't that big of a deal. It's a few points. Yes, uh, crew wins only a few points, but, but a people crew loss, hate a crew loss. Huge. Yeah, that 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 causes uh, you know. Riots and it causes eighty percent of the lobby to lose like thirty MMR, and that's like really hard for people to accept, you know. And they'll yeah. do anything they can to push back on that. 
And then yeah, if you've man. got the the judges and the jury themselves also losing the MMR, you're going to get a very biased decision just by the nature of like human nature. Yeah, definitely. That's that's so why I think it's good to bring in a fresh set of eyes who can hopefully look at the game in yeah. an unbiased way. And I mean, like it. you have to be realistic about all this stuff as well. The moderators are just people playing a video game at the end of the day. Yeah, and of course, yeah, that's true. They're not here as a paid job. They're here yeah. like doing charitable donation of their time. So I can understand why they'd want to play their games. And, you know, it's not always realistic to have infinite moderators. So sometimes moderators will be like there to control little things about their own game. But when it comes to a conflict of interest, I think it's yeah. like, a good idea for moderators to be mature and recuse themselves from the decision. They probably shouldn't join the call, even to give context and all that sort of thing. Better off letting, you know, some of the players give the context of what happened or show a VOD and have those moderators just sit aside um, because that way they can remove any question of bias from the decision and we can all sort of respect uh, that the, the decision was made with the interest of the community at heart, not any particular moderator's MMR. That, that makes sense, but uh, what if what if the, the moderator is imp though? Because don't you think the imp kind of needs to argue their case? Uh, if, the if, if both game? imps are also moderators, oh, yeah. <laughs> let's say that one of the imps is a moderator, then probably the non-moderator imp should, should give should, should give the case or whatever, um, because then you don't have this power imbalance. The, this person's on equal standing with the other players. They don't have some sway of power. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like all of this has this problematic thing around retaliation as well. Like if yeah. you speak up against a mod, you have to be worried about any consequences you may face. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not exactly an HR department, <laughs> right? The like, thing is, I mean, yeah. everyone's biased in their own way, you know. Yeah, that's true. We have monster joining the stream. Oh, look, uh, Raka has a long, wholesome message. Favorite game break was when you and your imp won the game, but your imp but clogged comms. Yeah, this is killing with a clog if I remember correctly. They were pushing for an imp win, and you were a Molly sound guy, so I hushed the lobby to ask you, as an imp win with his win on the line, if you thought it was a fair imp win or not, you laughed and said it's definitely a cancel. Yeah, I see. I think the, the thing is, if you put your money where your mouth is, and you sort of live by your moral code, and you mm -hmm. don't make uh, inconsistent <laughs> decisions, then people start trusting you. And I think I like sort of stand by most of my decisions. Of course, I've made mistakes. Of course, I have my own biases. Like... There are some players that I'm like biased against because I mm -hmm. think they're maybe more horrible people. But yeah, I, I, I try to like counter that bias by asking other people for their opinions, um, and that way it's not just entirely on my shoulders. Um, and same for like if you're in a, a game and it's a controversial decision, that the whole point of having moderators is neutral, unbiased third party. And for that reason, it's much much better if they're not in the game. Do you feel like when you're in a game that's uh, potentially calling for a review? that you often will argue against the imp. Like if your crewmate, will you often, if you think that the imp like deserved it, you, you think like- I will occasionally stand up, just like okay. Type Def did in this specific game um, yeah, that yeah, we're talking yeah. about, Busting yeah, the Bias. Yeah. Type Def was at the time, I think top crewmate. I think he might've been Sherlock Holmes. I think he was arguing for a, a and he win, yeah. yeah he stood up and sort of defended me and said like this should possibly be an imp win um and you know moderators sort of looked past that i think probably because of some bias against type def because of unrelated reasons around like why he eventually got banned or something like that mm -hmm. um and i think that that's really unfortunate because there's much more to a person than just whether they are banned for a different reason around like what is a fair decision how do you avoid bias? And like, for me, the key to avoiding bias is just to seek diverse opinions. Diverse, respected, yeah. trustable opinions, of course, but not just your own opinion. If you are living and dying by your own opinion, you will never be able to avoid bias completely because we all have Absolutely. bias. Yeah, I'm always impressed when uh, someone will argue against their own case in a, in a review when they think like, yeah, that we, we deserve to lose that one, guys. Like, yeah. Yeah, it shows I mean, like a bit of maturity and humility and that people are in it for the right reasons. Like the long-term yeah. outcome of doing that is much better than just some little number increasing in a shitty way by just exploiting, um, you know, like always assert that your way is right or that you deserve the win or whatever. I think it's yeah, the same I mean, way that like 
if you DC, just tank the DC, man. Don't try to, like, weasel your way out of it. Like, just own it. Like, yeah, it's a condemn, whatever. It's minus 9 MMR. And even that's going to go down. I think they're reducing the penalty. Just take it on the chin, and people will respect you for it, and you can move on. Don't hold the lobby hostage and push for a cancel. It's so silly. Like, yeah. Yeah, there are some players who take it to an extreme and will uh, call for cancels in situations where no one else thinks that it should be a cancel and that where and Absolutely. then we end up spending 20 30 minutes getting getting a mod reviewing over the footage just to just to tell you what nine out of ten people in the lobby were already saying yeah yeah i mean i guess you got to be fair you know okay but this but, has been a great interview we are at one hour and i do have a scheduled melee game now super smash Bros. Oh, right melee on. with my I good friend that in a long time if you are interested in playing that game, do reach out to Wiz uh, from mm -hmm. Waffle. Of course, you know Wiz. He and I played a great game. You can also see our YouTube video, and you can see just how bad I am. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's your man? Uh, I, I play a bit of Marth, a uh, little bit of uh, Pikachu back in the day. You know, Axe being an incredible Pikachu player, who I think is fun to watch, but I've never been that good. Um, yeah, so right Marth, uh, Falco. My Falco is disgusting. Oh, yeah. I'm doing a lot of, like... <laughs> crap like forward tilts or whatever and like i can't really do any reliable combos but it's a fun a game good, a good falco can be very aggravating yeah that sounds good Brignick. uh thanks did you ever do like anthers ladder or anything what's that did you ever do anthers ladder or like online ranked melee no i never got into uh ranked melee i just played I it see. a lot like casually definitely check it out like go look at um oh ice climber main from type def very cool uh, yeah, yeah, so you, you're going to be like <laughs> <I hate this laughs> wobbling or whatever. That, that was so horrible for the whole scene. But yeah, like go check out uh, Slippy, Dolphin, and um, they've improved it a lot. It's like got built-in ranked matchmaking now, so you can get, like play against someone of similar skill and you don't have to go through Discord or anything anymore. It's just all like I'll incorporated. That yeah. sounds interesting. I've seen some like tournaments, like you, you know, the online streaming tournaments of, totally. of, of Melee before, and, and it's really interesting to watch. Very cool. Yeah, awesome, man. Right on, Brittany. Well, install that and we'll play some Melee. It'll be awesome. Sounds good. It's the Thanks start of a blossoming, beautiful friendship. Maybe one day we'll play in a tournament together. <laughs> I love it. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on, Brittany. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Take nice care, man. Talking to you. Yeah, likewise. Take care. Bye.